Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to a webinar hosted by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service Science Applications Program. Uh, my name is Matt Graybaugh, and I'm a science coordinator for the Southwest Region of Fish and Wildlife Service, which includes Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and Oklahoma. My co-presenter on this webinar is Amanda Webb. Amanda has been working on this effort uh, as a part of Skyland Alliance, as well as the University of Arizona School of Natural Resources and the Environment. We will be presenting on a management strategy tool toolbox product being developed for the Madrean Watersheds Landscape Conservation Design Project. If you missed it, this is the second of two webinars leading up to a workshop that we're going to be holding in Tucson later this month. Uh, both of these webinars will give you good background if you're going to be attending that workshop, so we do recommend that you uh, watch both of them if you haven't yet. And all of our webinars are recorded and posted on the Desert LCC YouTube channel, so you can find those online. Um, there. And with that, we'll go ahead and get started. So today we're going to be talking about uh, management challenges and actions related to the Madrean Watershed Landscape Conservation Design and talk about um, some tools that we've been developing for the past several years. So as part of this, we developed a, a vision with uh, partners within the Madrean Watersheds geography. And this is that vision statement. I'll go ahead and read it out loud. So the Madrean Watersheds Initiative is a large landscape international effort to maintain and enhance the interconnected system of mountains, grasslands, deserts, and waters that supports species diversity, promotes healthy watersheds, and maintains the overall ecosystem integrity that enriches the lives of human communities. This is the Madrean Watersheds Landscape Conservation Design Geography, uh, which includes the Madrean archipel Archipelago, both in the U.S. and Mexico. So it includes portions of uh, southeastern Arizona, southwestern New Mexico, and then a large portion of the states of Sonora and Chihuahua in Mexico. So the landscape conservation design process, we're going to provide a quick overview here, again, trying to avoid going too much into detail because we've presented on that several times before, uh, but to give a high-level overview here, here again briefly. Um, if you've been involved with this process with us for a while, we used to refer to it as landscape conservation planning and design, which I'd like to revert back to at times to help describe the process. And when you break it up into the component pieces, you talk about landscape conservation planning, which is the what and how much for conservation. And then the conservation design, which is the where and how do actions need to be taken to meet the, um, the conservation planning goals. And then one goal of the landscape conservation design process is, is to foster the development of a collaborative partnership that will not only help develop these initial products, but also facilitate the long-term implementation and adaptive management that can grow out of the process. For anyone that's available or that's aware of the Climate Smart Planning Cycle, the landscape conservation design process builds off of that, and we'll talk briefly about uh, some of those ways here. So for the initiation of the landscape conservation design uh, process, we looked at defining the purpose and scope. And those uh, resulted in the, the fundamental objectives and the vision for the Madrean uh, landscape conservation design as well as the establishment of focal resources and values in the geography. In looking at addressing climate impacts and vulnerabilities, we sought out to identify the high priority stressors across the landscape, develop indicators to look at the impacts that those are having across the geography, and with that, develop spatial analysis products that can help us look at the state of indicators across the geography. And then finally, including components of scenario planning where we look at um, you know, possible future challenges across the geography to help figure out how we can address those. And then as we move forward, uh, the out one of the outcomes or goals for this is to develop a uh, Madrean Watersheds Blueprint, which helps establish the what and how, or excuse me, the where and how for conservation implementation. And we'll talk um, in this presentation about how that's related to adaptation and then the case studies process that we've been working on. And then another outcome of this uh, 
project is to be able to monitor and assess the status of the landscape condition using the indicators and the spatial analysis products that have been developed along the way. So first, I'll try to get through this really quickly is just a recap of the, the vision and fundamental objectives, which I've already talked about the vision, and then moving forward talking to talk about focal resources, values, and then high priority stressors. So moving from the vision to goals, uh, one of the goals for the Madrean Watersheds LCD is biodiversity. And the vision statement here is that transboundary Madrean watersheds are a haven for the unique diversity of native and endemic species. Diving further to look at objectives, they are to maintain water and riparian systems, maintain and enhance native species and habitat, and then maintain populations of priority species within the geography. The second major goal is connectivity. And connectivity looks at enhancing linkages uh, to connect the diverse life zones of Sky Island, uh, Sky Island ecosystems from valley bottoms to mountaintops, from southern Sonora to the Gila River in Arizona, enabling persistence of migratory wildlife and allowing for the possible future shift of species and ecosystems in a changing climate. With the objectives of maintaining or increasing linkages for wildlife, maintaining a connected network of water resources, and increasing and restoring connectivity of habitat. The third goal for the Madrean Watersheds landscape conservation design is socioecological services. So healthy watersheds and functioning ecosystems deliver high valued services to human communities and essential benefits to wildlife, with several objectives listed for that as well, including um, optimizing watershed benefits for humans as well as ecosystems and wildlife, um, establishing value for ecological services, and then several additional objectives that are listed here. Now to look at the process a little bit. Um, one of the main ways that we've been, been developing all of these are with expert in, input gathered at various workshops. So some of, those, some of the questions that we've addressed include what stressors and pressures are having the highest impact on the ecosystems? what management objectives um, folks have for working on those ecosystems, and then finally tying those together. So how are the high impact stressors and pressures affecting what you're trying to achieve? And moving forward, uh, the questions that we're uh, working on tackling right now that we'll focus on a lot for, he uh, for this webinar is what adaptation strategies and actions are you already implementing to reduce vulnerability? And then what new adaptation strategies and actions could you or your partners implement? As well as looking at some of the values, which are how people care about, or why people care about the resources and how people are using, uh, how people are using resources. And then finally, some open -ended, more open-ended questions. Uh, what kind of information would you need to inform management? to address your challenges across the landscape. So throughout this process, we've tried to uh, get feedback from partners about uh, what would actually help with conservation implementation. And this is some of the feedback that we've gotten. So first is, is to develop a framework to prioritize management actions and monitor landscape scale conditions. And you can, you can see how that ties back to um, some of the steps that we've highlighted already. We want to make sure that the um, outcomes of this product focus on implementation rather than producing another planning document that won't get used. We've also talked about the need to strengthen or develop ongoing forums and partnerships for coordination and collaboration, recognizing that there are lots of groups already doing uh, collaborative conservation on the um, work across the landscape. How do we scale up from those to build on them instead of repeating um, and creating yet another layer? And then finally, we need to find a way to work for shared leadership and the development of shared funding for the long-term implementation of the landscape conservation design. So circling back uh, to, this, um, to this slide one more time, uh, one thing just to call it really quickly is that as we've uh, moved forward in the, in the project, we've looked at moving away from just 
of high priority stressors that have to do with climate impacts and vulnerabilities to broaden that scope a little bit. Um, so as we move forward, um, just so that there's not confusion, as we look at um, management challenges, now we're just calling them management challenges. So that's how we frame the toolboxes that we'll be talking about. So with that, um, I'm going to, to hand over the presentation to Amanda to talk about the management strategy toolbox that she's been working on. So with that, bear with us for a second just while we work on switching over. All right. So I am sharing a slide, trying to get the video boxes out of the way. So you should see a slide that says current product. And um, I'll go ahead and get started. And if you're having problems seeing anything, please uh, put it in the chat box, and, and Matt will help you address that and flag me down if I need to stop. So I'm going to talk to you about the current product that we have um, and, and talk about some ways we might move forward with the information that we have compiled. So what we have is a catalog of adaptation actions that we have linked to case studies and CTAS, which um, if you're not familiar with that, is a collaborative conservation adaptation strategy toolbox. And these adaptation actions we compiled based on input from partners from the last four years, and is currently residing in a Google Sheet um, on the Google Drive. I'll show you this in more detail shortly. So these actions came from events um, and conversations that have been occurring since 2015 um, in Tucson with the very first Climate Smart Landscape Conservation Planning and Design Workshop. Um, as you know, there have been additional workshops over the years, um, all the way up leading to the Madrid Conference last year where there was an LCD breakout session. And we also pulled actions from um, ongoing meeting notes. Uh, so we just reviewed documentation, um, meeting summaries, and discussion notes from these different events to pull these actions um, from. So we developed a long list of adaptation actions based on what came out of all these workshops. Um, and so we wanted to categorize them in a way that made it easier to use them and find actions about particular subjects. So we've categorized them by the type of action that they represent, um, which LCD goals that the actions would address, um, the management challenges that the actions would help alleviate or adapt to. And then what kind of an approach does that action represent? Um, and we'll get into these in greater detail. We logged the ecosystem of interest, um, meaning um, for each action there was usually um, a particular ecosystem involved like grasslands or riparian areas, so we, we catalog which ecosystem was uh, in discussion at that time. And of course, we also included the source document so you know which event, uh, which document these actions came from. So going into each of these in greater detail, we have uh, three different types of actions. It could be a management strategy, a monitoring need, or a research need. And here I've provided just some rough numbers of how many of each we have. Um, this document right now is still um, being edited a bit, so these numbers are a little squishy and subject to change, but um, this should give you a rough idea of just how much work and information you were able to pull out of existing resources. LCD goals, these go, go back to the uh, three goals that Matt just reviewed. We also categorize the actions according to the management challenges that they would help address. So this is what I'm sort of calling the greatest hit list of management challenges in the Madrian LCD. Um, these should all look really familiar to everybody. They've come up over and over again. Um, and so we just sort of identified them and set them aside here to include in our spreadsheet. And just to call your attention to the bottom two here, I think most of the conversations that we've had about this have mainly been about ecosystem management, 
Um, but we made sure to include a few that really uh, help capture social issues, cultural issues, um, barriers to coordination and uh, collaboration and communication, as well as um, impact management challenges on people and human communities. So we've included those as well. Approaches to management, I'm going to go through these here. Um, analysis. Analysis could involve anything from doing some kind of an assessment to a model. Um, anything that requires any sort of analysis was included under that um, data. That could include collecting data, uh, sharing data, storing data, data management. Uh, collaboration, communication, conservation, those are all pretty straightforward. Uh, policy, um, this was a subject that came up periodically uh, through various workshops where people would discuss um, their, their thoughts on, on current policies. And although you know, changing policy may be outside the purview of the LCB effort, uh, we went ahead and collected this information while we were at it in case it might uh, be useful at some point. Protection, <laughs> we took a pretty broad uh, view on protection, so this could be about uh, creating actual protected areas. Um, it could be about finding ways to, um, to prevent development in sensitive areas. It could be about um, taking action to, say, protect a water supply in a mountain watershed. Um, and then restoration. So here are the ecosystems of interest. Uh, that we included in the catalog. Um, green streams, riparian areas, deserts, grasslands, the drained woodlands, and montane forests. Those are all you know, ones that we're used to talking about. We also um, categorized anything that was related to farming or ranching, just to kind of be able to pull those out. And then in some of the source documents, these discussions on adaptation actions were really in a more general sense. So. We created another heading here for general or across cutting um, to, to be more of a catch-all for these actions. So this is a bit of a wordy slide. It's just to show um, all the different documents from the meetings that we pulled these actions from. I'm not going to go through these individually, but just wanted to give you an idea of the scope of um, what we went through to pull these together. So in addition to categorizing all these adaptation actions, um, we also then linked each action to um, relevant case studies that um, show how others have carried out similar actions that may be within or outside of the Madrian LCD geography. So not all actions have case studies that are relevant to them, but a lot of them do. Um, so we've linked those together. Uh, we also provide a link to the source document, so if you'd like to go back and see what context this particular action was discussed in, then you can go back and check that out. And we also flagged if, if there was a discussion during a workshop where there was, um, people were talking about potential partners to work with to help carry out a particular action. We also flagged that in our, in our Google Sheet so that you would know if um, if there was a discussion about that, in case that was useful information and people are still looking for folks to work with um, for a particular action. So I just wanted to give you a few examples of what kinds of management strategies we have um, in this catalog. They range um, across all kinds of different things. Uh, for example, the first one is really about convening people and sharing lessons learned and helping promote um, information about uh, water harvesting methods. Some of the actions are about creating collaborative frameworks to address landscape scale issues. Some of them are just, you know, about doing work on the ground to create or restore habitat. And we also have some that are about finding creative ways to find funding to implement uh, work on the ground. So there's a wide array of different management strategies that um, are captured in this compilation. And we just wanted to take a minute to acknowledge um, our, our case study authors. 
so the case studies and CCAS that we keep referring to, those are co-authored with uh, CCAS staff and contributors and contributing organizations. And uh, the people and organizations that we work with to develop those case studies are, are identified in, in the case studies, but um, there are all these people who are working sort of behind the scenes to, to co-author um, and do a lot of the heavy lifting to bring those to fruition. So here's a list of those folks. They represent a number of different agencies as well as universities and organizations. And so now I would like to take you on a quick tour of the catalog. So I am going to get to this Google Sheet, which hopefully you can all see. And I'm just going to collapse this toolbar at the top to make it a little bit easier to view. So here in the top two rows of our Google Sheet, we have all these headings that we've been talking about, these different categories. Um, this first row here, or sorry, column here is an index. That's just to give each one a unique, each action a unique identifier so that we can reference it more easily. Then the second column, this is the actual uh, list of adaptation actions. And then from there, going to the right, we have here's the type of action, uh, management strategy, research need, and monitoring need. And throughout this spreadsheet, um, for the sake of ease of data entry, we've used zeros and ones to indicate whether or not these categories apply to a given action. So you can just, um, one is like, yes, this category does apply to this action, and zero is no, it does not. So that's how that works. Um, for, ease of, for ease of reading right now, we have the case studies then queued up here next in the sheet. Um, moving on to the right. You can see these other categories in the yellow here. We have the LCD goals. Uh, in the orange, management challenges. In the sort of purple color, that's our approaches to management challenges. Ecosystem of interest in green. And then here in this orange, um, this is where we've uh, flagged where there was a discussion on potential partners. And then scrolling all on to the right, um, this is all the information about uh, which document um, the action came out of. So it's a pretty um, pretty hefty spreadsheet, um, but the, what's nice about this is that we can filter and sort to find <clears throat> excuse me, some more specific information. So for example, uh, let's say that I'm working on invasive species in grasslands. Um, I can go here uh, to the second row where it's got this cell that says invasive species under management challenges, and there's a little icon here that I can click on. And I can go down here and deselect everything except the one, the, the, the rows that have a one identified here, and click OK. So now I've filtered out all the adaptation actions that are related to invasive species. Now I'm going to go over here to ecosystem of interest and do the same for grasslands, click OK. And then those are all sorted from basic species and grasslands. And then I can add an additional layer and say, well, I'm only interested in looking in actions related to restoration. So I've set these filters, and then I can scroll back over to my adaptation actions. And now I have a much more focused list of adaptation actions um, uh, based on what I'm interested in, and then over here where we have the case studies then, these are our, our hyperlinks. So to go to a case study, all I have to do is click on the link. And it takes a minute to open, but here is the case study, and then I can read about how um, these folks have implemented their actions. So that's this um, spreadsheet in a nutshell. I'm not going to go too much more into it than that at this point. Go back to my slides here. So there are a few different options for you know how, what we might do with this um, catalog going forward. Um, perhaps you're comfortable using a Google Sheet, and um, you know this this still fine to you, or maybe you don't think you'll necessarily need this information very often. So uh, we could just go ahead and finish wrapping this up in the current state, and you know. Keep it like that as a, as a resource. 
Another option would be to generate a series of PDF tables um, using this spreadsheet, um, which would which would really uh, greatly reduce the amount of content um, being shown at uh, at one time because you would be restricted by the size of a sheet um, of um, like a file sheet, like eight and a half by eleven or seventeen. So that makes it really easy to read and look at. You know, it's very straightforward. Um, the thing with PDF, PDF tables is that they're not automatically updated. So if we made some changes to that base spreadsheet, then we might want to, you know, regenerate those PDF tables or something like that. But that is a potential option for using this information. So here's just a mock-up of what something like that might look like. Um, Note here at the upper left that we've narrowed it down to just riparian areas, so we've eliminated all the other ecosystems to try to focus this information a little bit better. Um, at the top, we've really just included uh, management challenges and then provided uh, a few different case studies. There might be more case studies on a given action, but again, we're sort of restricted by space here, so we've got a subset. Um, and then the color coding. Here is just to help improve readability, and then you know, for each management challenge, we could find some way to indicate that the action on the row, um, you know, is addressing that management challenge. So this is just to give you an idea of what a PDF table might look like. Another option would be able would be using the filter view feature in Google Sheets, um, which is just a way to sort of pre-filter information for someone. You can create a filter view, and when you do, it generates a unique URL. So it creates an, a link that you can go to, and that link will always show that filtered view that you have predetermined. So this is nice because it does automatically update when you make an edit to the base Google Sheet. Um, it could be used to share more information than you might have in a PDF table, but less than you know, just going into that Google Sheet and, and starting from scratch. Um, it's not the, the view itself is static. It's not interactive, but there's always that underlying Google Sheet that is interactive. So just to show you what that looks like. So here is a filter view. It looks a lot like the regular Google Sheet, except up here on the upper left, we've given it a name. We're calling this one Grasslands Restoration, and the URL up at the top is different. Um, and so if we scan here along the second row from the top here, we can see that here invasive species has already been selected and filtered. Restoration has already been filtered. We've already selected for grasslands. So it's essentially the same thing that we were viewing earlier in the Google feed, except it was all pre-filtered for us. And so here we have this list of actions. That's much shorter. So um, again, all these uh, case studies are hyperlinked, and you can click directly to them. So filter views is another option for, for focusing the information. Going back to presentation. Um, the last option that I'm going to discuss with you is about um, using an application to create some kind of interactive viewer that would allow the user to access a larger body of information, but decide and filter for themselves um, what pieces they want to pull out in a more user-friendly way than maybe that Google Sheet is for some folks. Um, using this kind of a tool, well, we could do it so that the information in the app is automatically updated based on any edits that happen in the Google Sheet. So all that would uh, happen automatically. So just to show you what something like this might look like. Here's a mock-up of uh, a management strategies tool um, using something called Awesome Table. Um, we have these boxes here in this orange area, and these reflect the different categories um, that we've included in the sheet. And there's a lot of them in here right now, but this is also something that can be built to be a little bit more focused in case people find having this many options to be a little overwhelming. Anyway, but starting here at the top, we have LCD goals, and then we move into management challenges with altered fire regimes. If you go on down the list, eventually you get to 
approaches, you know, analysis, data, policy, protection. And then up towards the bottom, we have our, um, our ecosystem. And then the results for what we do up there are then presented down below. So for example, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna click on invasive species and select everything with a, with a one as yes. I'm gonna look for things related to invasive species. I'm going to go to restoration and I'm gonna select the one there. I'm gonna do the same thing at grasslands. And then down below, we it's now giving us only nine um, actions. Um, and so here we have them listed out here in the results. We've got the adaptation action here, the index, again, which is a nice reference. And then we have these case studies listed out. Now, right now, these just look like plain text. Um, that's because this is just a simple mock-up, but we could also hyperlink these so that just like in the Google Sheet, you can click directly on the title of that case study and then go to it in CPAS. Um, and then you can actually scroll through the rest of the spreadsheet if you wanted to, but here we've just tried to kind of condense all the, all the most pertinent information here um, so that it's easily viewable on the left side of the spreadsheet. So that's what something like that might look like. Um, and so uh, these are just some things to think about leading up to the workshop next week, um, give you an idea of the tools we have available, the information we have available, um, the options we have for using those going forward based on what your needs are. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Matt to wrap us up. Great, thanks Amanda, and bear with us again for one second while we get this going again. Somehow I always pick the wrong monitor to start sharing first. Okay. Almost got a guy. Yay, okay, I think I got it. Um, Amanda, can you confirm that you can see my slide again? Yes, I can see it. Okay, cool. Okay, so again, thanks for that. Uh, bearing with us while we switch things back a little bit. Um, you know, just to kind of recap what Amanda went through right now, I mean, it's, it's obvious that we've been able to compile a lot of information that I think could be potentially useful to managers. I think a lot of the work we have ahead of us is to figure out how to make it uh, most useful kind of immediately and in the longer term for conservation practitioners. So that's where we need a lot of help moving forward. And that's kind of what I'll touch on here briefly just for a few minutes. Um, so the next steps are really to primarily to work closely with partners in the landscape conservation design to figure out how we can make the information most effectively presented and in a way that will be usable, um, like Amanda was just walking through. And with the idea being that this is a like a master list of management strategies, but it also could be used as a tool to help prioritize conservation action. Taking a step a little bit farther back, um, not just thinking about management strategies, but for the landscape conservation design uh, project, we're really in the stages right now of you know, wrapping up previous work, of course, but also thinking about how we can support the landscape conservation design process going forward, you know, longer term. And really the primary challenge that we're up against right now is that the 
support for the Desert Landscape Conservation Cooperative is, is going away. So if this partnership is going to um, keep going in a meaningful way, we need to find a way to have shared um, shared ownership and shared support for the project. We've also talked a lot about the way to engage with different partnerships. Um, like I mentioned, there are watershed partnerships throughout a lot of this geography as well, as well as some more um, like ranch focused groups and other parties like that. So we are attending workshops with those groups and trying to make sure that the landscape conservation design project uh, products are grounded in, on issues and priorities on the ground for those different partnerships. And just two really quick examples out of several that we've been helping uh, participate in are the Lower San Pedro Watershed uh, Group and then the Tucson Basin and Santa Cruz River Watershed. Both of those geographies have emerging partnerships that could uh, potentially move forward at least with pieces of this landscape conservation design work. And once we have the framework established of the management toolbox, as well as the, uh, the monitoring framework that's supported by the spatial analysis tools that we've been working on, really we're thinking about how to move from landscape conservation design to, um, to actual action on the ground, conservation action on the ground. And you know, thinking of it almost in terms of an adaptive management process, we really would like to help move this toward implementation of monitoring. Um, so the first step for that is obviously to identify opportunities for partners to actually implement these management strategies on the ground across the landscape. Then as that's done, we'll be able to use the established spatial analysis framework to monitor conditions over time, looking not only at how the conservation challenges are affecting the landscape, but also how hopefully the conservation actions are mitigating, um, mitigating those challenges or improving, you know, in spite, improving conditions in spite of those. And one of the long-term visions for this is to revisit um, the state of the watersheds. So you, um, having an analysis product that can be shared at regional events like the Madrean Conference that um, has been happening for several years here in Tucson um, as, as a forum that could be used to talk about the landscape conservation design actions that have been put into place and then revisit how they've affected the landscape based on the indicator process and framework. Uh, most of the folks on the, this webinar are probably are already aware of this, um, but we do have a workshop coming up next week, uh, Tuesday, June 25th, um, to talk about next steps for this, this project and try to move from uh, management toolbox and spatial analysis to products that are useful for, for conservation practitioners. So we will be providing a brief recap of some of the tools that we've developed, including this management strategy toolbox as well as the indicator framework. Uh, but the group would really like to talk about um, how they can move forward as a collaborative group to advance landscape conservation on the Madrean watershed. So looking not only at just some of these tools, but again, the you know, structural and organizational support for the landscape conservation design. And associated with that is determining how the group can help make decisions as a collaborative over time um, in this complex landscape. And with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Um, I hope that this has been useful for the folks on the phone um, or on the webinar. Um, and 